is going to show you how to do all the compound interest problems in this chapter. Okay, so in the first problem, we had $15,000 being invested into an account that pays interest at 4.25% per annum compounded monthly, and we want to find how much the investment is worth after five years. Okay, so the first thing we do, we want to go to Menu. Now, obviously, this is a finance question, and then we want to go to Finance Solver. We're going to use Finance Solver for both compound interest and depreciation, so we click on that. Now, it's kind of cool. Basically, you just enter all the values from the question into this table. So, first of all, we've got five years, but it's compounded monthly, which means 12 times per year. So, 5 times 12 is 60. So, we'd put N, which is the number of payments, or I like to think of it as the number of time periods, which is more applicable to compound interest and depreciation. So, 5 times 12 is 60. So, that is... M. I is the interest rate. Now it's always the interest rate per annum, so you don't have to convert the interest rate to monthly or half yearly or anything. So you literally just type in 4.25. And you don't need to put the percentage sign, it's assuming it's a percent. Now we're investing $15,000. So that's the present value, the initial value of the account. So we call that the present value. That's how the um, calculator recognizes it. Think about it. Present value is before future value, which is down here. So PV is present value, FV is future value. So the initial value comes before the final value. So present value has to be the initial value. Okay. So we put 15,000 there. Okay, now. For compound interest and depreciation, all we're doing, all we ever do is put one initial payment at the beginning and then we get one, one value at the end. We don't put periodic payments like every year or every month into the account. Therefore, in compound interest and depreciation, we're going to leave this payment as zero. Okay, we're just going to leave it like that all the time because we're not adding anything after that initial investment. Okay, now future value, that's actually what we want to find out in this question. We want to find the future value of our investment after five years. So I'm going to leave that as zero or whatever it is for now. PPY, now it's a little bit um, confusing. It means payments per year, which is actually the same. If I scroll down, CPY, which is compound periods per year. Now, as you know, if it's compounded monthly, there will be 12 compound periods per year. And I put 12 here and press enter. I clicked on CPY and it automatically changed it to 12. Now if we scroll down further, this is asking when do you want your payments to be put in? At the end or at the beginning? Now the default is end. We're going to leave it like that. So really these two, CPY and payment at, you don't ever need to touch them. All you need to do is focus on these ones up here. Okay, so we've entered our values. And I again, I want the future value. So all I need to do is click on future value. And as it says here, press enter to calculate. So I press enter. And it comes up with the future value. Now, I've actually made a little mistake here. I was supposed to put the present value as a negative. The reason for that is when you invest money, you actually... Take your money out of your savings and put it in an investment, um, investment account. So therefore, you're actually losing, in a way, you're losing $15,000 out of your savings. That's why the present value should be a negative. And so now when I come back here, the future value is a positive. Because I'm, well, it's assumed, I guess, that I'm going to take that future value out and put it back in my savings. Now to do the second problem, okay, we're going to put in new values. So it said, so we want to know how much we need to deposit into an account to collect $50,000 at the end of three years. I'll just stop there. $50,000 at the end of three years. That means my future value is $50,000. So I'm on the second problem now, so I'm starting again. Okay, at the end of three years, and I better read the rest before I assume N is three. It says... If the account is paying 5.2% interest compounded quarterly, now let's think about that. Compounded quarterly, 
for three years. It's four times a year for three years. Four times three is 12. N must be 12. Okay, they said the rate was 5.2. Now the present value, I don't actually know. So I'm going to come back to that. Um, I can put it back as zero if I like. I don't even technically have to, but I'll put it back as zero just not to confuse myself. Now, the PPY, now let's have a look. It said compounded quarterly. Quarterly means that happens four times a year, so I'm going to put four times a year. PPY is four. And now we've put all our information in, so we're going to go back to present value, which is the amount I initially have to deposit. So I press enter, and I get that. 42,820 dollars and I guess 99 cents. Okay, so that's problem two finished. Now we'll go to problem three. It said, how long must we invest $40,000 at 6.45% per annum compounded half yearly for it to amount to 10,000? Notice we have the present value and the future value. We're investing 4,000, so that means in the present value we put negative 4,000. And in the future I want it to be 10,000, so I put 10,000 in the future. Now, what else do we have in the question? The interest rate is 6.45. And compounded half yearly. That means the PPY, half yearly happens twice a year, so we're going to put two there. Now, I've put all my information in, but I want to know how long it is, which means I want to know N. So I go to there, press enter. N is 28.8678, but we have to keep in mind that we're talking about half years. Because remember, when we put N in in the past, it's the number of time periods, and our time periods are in the half years. So if you want to answer it in years... I would need to divide it by 2. So our answer is about 14.43 or 14.4 years. Problem in this chapter, it says um, we're depositing $5,000 into an account that compounds interest monthly. Two and a half years later, the account totals $6,000. What was the rate of interest? I guess it's a finance problem. So we're going to get menu, finance, finance solver. Now, N, it's two and a half years compounded monthly, so we would do 2.5 times 12, that's 30. The interest rate I don't know, so I'm just going to put this zero. The present value is 5,000, so it, remember, we put it as a negative, so it's negative 5,000. PMT, we ignore that, it's zero. Our um, future value is $6,000, because that's what it's going to amount to. And it, our, our compounding is monthly, so I put 12 here. Now, I want to find the interest rate. So I click in the interest and press enter. And as we can see, it's 7.32% per annum. 